Every great idea begins with a question, one so simple that most people overlook it. For Nikola Tesla, that question was, what if motion could be created not through impact, but through adhesion? It sounds abstract, almost poetic, yet this idea gave birth to one of the most mysterious and elegant machines ever designed, the Tesla turbine, a turbine without blades. At first glance, it makes no sense. Turbines, by their nature, are built around blades, shaped precisely to catch and direct the flow of air or steam. Without them, how could a turbine work? Still, Tesla believed it could. Over a century later, a modern physicist named Charlie decided to test that belief. What he discovered could reshape how we think about small-scale power generation. The birth of turbines. To understand the genius of Tesla's idea, we have to travel back almost 2,000 years. In the first century AD, an ancient Greek engineer named Hero of Alexandria built what is now considered the world's first steam turbine. It was a simple metal sphere with two bent arms that expelled steam through tiny nozzles. As the steam escaped, it caused the sphere to spin. This primitive device, known as Hero's Turbine, produced almost no usable power. Yet, it demonstrated a powerful principle that fluids, when properly directed, could generate motion. Centuries later, the Industrial Revolution would turn that principle into one of the cornerstones of modern engineering. Turbines evolved into complex, multi-stage machines that powered ships, electrical plants, and jet engines. Two major designs emerged, reaction turbines and impulse turbines. A reaction turbine, like the one later perfected by Sir Charles Parsons, works by guiding steam through alternating rows of fixed and moving blades. Each stage extracts some of the steam's energy in a smooth, continuous process. The result is a gentle but highly efficient energy transfer. The steam accelerates, passes through the blades, and leaves slower, having given up part of its kinetic energy. Impulse turbines, on the other hand, take a more direct approach. Pioneered by Gustave de Laval, these turbines rely on nozzles that accelerate steam or gas to extreme speeds before smashing it against the blades. The impact, or impulse, pushes the blades forward, generating rotation. The principle is similar to a hammer striking an anvil, sudden, forceful, and efficient at high speeds. These two designs still dominate the world's power generation systems. Nearly every turbine today is either a reaction or an impulse turbine, or a hybrid of both. Nikola Tesla's radical idea. Then came Nikola Tesla, one of history's most enigmatic inventors. In 1913, Tesla unveiled a new kind of turbine, one that defied all conventional thinking. Instead of using blades, veins, or buckets, he proposed a simple stack of thin, smooth metal discs, separated by small gaps and enclosed in a casing. Steam or air would enter tangentially at the edges, spiral inward between the discs, and exit through a central exhaust. It didn't rely on impacts or collisions. It relied on viscous adhesion, the natural stickiness of fluids. Though air or steam may seem intangible, they still possess internal friction. When a moving fluid touches a solid surface, a thin layer of it clings and drags the surface along with it. Tesla realized he could harness this subtle effect, the same principle that causes a ping pong ball to spin in a jet of air, or makes honey pull a spoon as it drips. As the fluid spiraled inward, it would gently transmit its momentum to each disc. With dozens of discs stacked together, the energy transfer would be remarkably smooth and efficient, without turbulence or vibration. In theory, it was capable of extraordinary efficiency, as much as 95% under ideal conditions, far beyond what traditional turbines could achieve. But there was a problem. The Tesla turbine produced incredible rotational speed, but very little torque. It could spin fast, but it struggled to move heavy loads. Engineers of the early 20th century dismissed it as a curiosity, impractical for large-scale power generation. The world moved on, leaving the bladeless turbine as another one of Tesla's beautiful but forgotten dreams. A modern revival. More than a century later, Charlie, a physicist and engineer, decided to revisit Tesla's invention. 
Unlike many Tesla enthusiasts who built replicas for demonstration, Charlie wanted to make the concept practical. Working out of his workshop, he redesigned and built his own version of the Tesla Turbine, a working model that could generate usable electrical power. His turbine consists of 75 aluminum discs, each precisely stamped with small dimples that act as built-in spacers. These discs are not bolted or welded together. They float freely on the shaft, expanding and contracting with temperature changes, allowing smooth operation across a wide thermal range. Compressed air enters tangentially through the casing, spiraling inward between the discs, and exits through a central outlet. The turbine is coupled with brushless DC motors salvaged from RC cars, used here as electrical generators. When air at only 20 to 40 psi is fed into the system, the turbine spins fast enough to generate over 1,200 watts, enough to light two 600 watt bulbs. In controlled tests, Charlie's setup achieved as much as 4,200 watts at higher pressures of 40 psi, proving that the concept, though simple, could deliver meaningful power output. Engineering elegance. What makes Charlie's design fascinating is its simplicity and resilience. Traditional turbines are finely machined, sensitive to impurities, and prone to erosion when exposed to wet steam or dust. The Tesla turbine, by contrast, thrives in such conditions. Because there are no blades, there's nothing for particles to strike or wear down. It can handle unfiltered geothermal steam, complete with minerals and debris, without significant degradation. This property makes it uniquely suited for small, decentralized power systems, where ruggedness matters more than perfection. Charlie's company, Tester Energy, now develops these turbines as micro-steam power plants. Each unit is compact enough to fit on a workbench and capable of running independently from the electrical grid. In the event of a blackout, a small boiler and turbine like this could keep essential systems powered entirely off-grid. Tesla's original vision of distributed, efficient energy, machines that could bring power to remote areas without massive infrastructure, is finally taking shape, not in a laboratory, but in a garage. The physics behind the beauty. The genius of the Tesla turbine lies not only in its engineering, but in its physics. Instead of brute force, it relies on the fluid's boundary layer the thin region near a surface where velocity transitions from zero to the free stream value. By exploiting this layer, Tesla managed to design a turbine that works with the flow of nature rather than against it. Every molecule of air or steam contributes to the rotation, not by impact, but by cohesion. This means less turbulence, less noise, and less mechanical stress. It's a remarkably quiet machine. So quiet, in fact, that when it runs, the only sound you hear is the hiss of air and the faint whir of the shaft. It's the kind of invention that feels both ancient and futuristic, an elegant harmony between science and simplicity. A legacy rekindled. Nikola Tesla called this turbine his favorite invention. That's a remarkable statement coming from a man whose work gave birth to alternating current, radio, and wireless transmission. He saw in it something purer, a design so simple and so universal that it could outlast technology itself. And though the world wasn't ready for it in 1913, today's materials, tools, and computational understanding might finally unlock its full potential. What Charlie has done is more than rebuild a century-old design. He's revived a philosophy that innovation doesn't always mean complexity, and that sometimes progress begins with returning to forgotten simplicity. His aluminum discs, stamped and assembled by hand, echo Tesla's original vision, efficient motion born not from impact, but from interaction. In a time when the world is searching for cleaner, smaller, and more adaptable energy solutions, the Tesla turbine stands as a reminder that genius often lies in the ideas we've already had but failed to understand. Maybe the world wasn't ready before, but it might be now. The spirit of innovation. This is how revolutions begin. Not in giant research labs, but in quiet workshops. A curious mind, a forgotten idea, and the persistence to make it work. 
Charlie's journey with the Tesla turbine mirrors Tesla's own story. Bold imagination met with skepticism, followed by the quiet satisfaction of proving that nature's simplicity often hides the deepest truths. As the turbine spins, smooth and silent, it whispers a message across time that even the smallest forces, when understood deeply, can move the world. From a Greek inventor's steam sphere to Tesla's disk turbine, and now to a physicist's garage in the 21st century, the story of the turbine is, at its heart, a story of human curiosity. The relentless drive to turn invisible forces into tangible power. Nikola Tesla once stated that the future would show the true value of his inventions. Perhaps that future has finally arrived.